when I first started and said I was going to write up some little social history, uh, someone told me, a native, Brock Porter, told me, no matter how much research, how many interviews, no matter how much I wrote, I could never be a real Brock Porter because I wasn't born here. <laughs> and so I said, well, can my children be real Brock Porters? <laughs> they were both born here. And she said, we'll have to think about that because they're the first generation. <laughs> so, anyway, no matter how we are considered as foreigners, uh, I think I've been very lucky that we uh, that we're here. I'll tell you how I got here. Uh, my husband and I were at the University of Michigan. He was a student at the university. And uh, Emmanuel Muganis, and some of you may remember him for the wonderful tours he took people on to go to Greece. And he called and said to John, uh, they are going to hire another instructor. <coughs> in the English department at this little town, and I think you'd like it if you can come right away. So John was ready to get a little experience in teaching, so he came the next day. He drove from Michigan here, had an interview with Dr. Blaine Delancey. The next morning, they hired John. Now later on, the members of the department which were kind of smart aleck, said. <laughs> the reason they hired you is because the only other applicant that could come immediately was named Cantaloupe. <laughs> we took a vote and decided we like chestnuts better than cantaloupes. <laughs> so that, that was the beginning of my husband's career in Brockport. And though his was rather short-lived, uh, he was happy here, too. I never had lived in a small town, didn't think I would like it, but I loved it. I, I loved being able to walk everywhere. While walking around, I couldn't help but notice this beautiful Morgan Manning House, except then it wasn't called the Morgan Manning House, it was just the Morgan Home. And so I inquired about who lived here, and I was told that the Morgan family had lived here for a long, long time. Now, everybody in the family, Mr. and Mrs. Morgan, and six of their seven children were deceased. The oldest daughter was Sarah Morgan, and she had married a Dr. Manning in 1893. By the time we came, she'd been a widow for a long, long time. John and I moved on, left our apartment on Monroe Avenue, and rented another apartment. And we lived in rented quarters until 1961, when we built our house on 4th Section Road. We moved right in, and until last year, I still lived in it. By the time we moved in, we had a young daughter. Ta-da! Well, you wait, stand up. <laughs> I was busy with our own life, and I really didn't think about what was going on at the Morgan Manor, the Morgan Home. In 1964, I was in the hospital in September, having my baby boy, who's also here. Where's my baby? I was in the hospital. Mark was two days old, and a nurse came in my room and told me that the big red brick house on Main Street had burned during the night, and they had brought the lady in, Mrs. Manning, and she had already died. Sarah Morgan had, years ago, before the fire, of course, made out her will and said she would like the house to go to some organization, and it would be an organization that would keep the house in good condition so that the people of Brockport could enjoy it and appreciate it. Various people had been talking about starting an historical society for a long time. They knew this was the time to do it and see if they could get this beautiful house for their headquarters. 1965, a man knocked on our door and we found out he was there about the newly formed Historical Society. Now, in the last 
two years of my husband's life, he started having a lot of physical problems, and he had a hip replacement. His surgery was uh, experimental, really. It was not successful. And then, while he was in and out of the hospital for that, they discovered he also had lung cancer. So in 69, 1969, my husband died. Well, as some of you already know, that's a really lost feeling. But one thing that I had always wanted to do, I was embarrassed being a faculty wife and maybe the only one that had been to college only one year before I got married. So I was always thinking about going back to school and I must say, my husband always said, if that's what you want to do, go over and enroll. But I didn't. But as soon as he died, I did. And that led to a very happy part of my life. And this is what was nice. Mark started to kindergarten, and I started to college the same day. <laughs> and the reason that I became a history major was I wanted to be sure I could get classes that would be over before time for the school bus to bring my five-year-old home. Otherwise, I probably would have majored in English, except I was a little leery about that, even if the schedule was good, because I thought, suppose I get over there and I'm really dumb, and they think, well, we remember John, we have to give her a name whether she knows anything or not. <laughs> Glenn went to college then too. She went to Genesee at first, and then she came back, and she graduated from Brockport about the same time I did. It was, it was an unusual situation, but a happy one, I think. When my husband died, my parents assumed that I and my children would just move back to Louisville, where they were still reading, living. But I was very happy up here. I had so many friends. I thought this was the friendliest place you could ever live. I finally finished school. Then I took several part-time jobs, and I was doing some volunteer work right here in the Morgan Manning House. In 1978, Jean Redman, who was the president then, called and asked if I would be interested in writing the monthly newsletter. I was glad to do the writing, but they told me about all the letters that somebody had already dug out of the carriage house, fortunately, so they didn't burn in 1964 when every, almost everything in the house burned. All these letters were letters that the Morgans had written and never threw away. I took a lot of the letters home with me because there were so many. By that time, my, father, my mother had died, my father was living with me, and he said, I never heard of a job where you don't get paid but you have to bring the work home with you. <laughs> It wasn't too long till I got a call, and it was Jean to Warner, and she said, we've had a meeting, and we're wondering, how would you like to keep doing more of what you're doing, but get a salary? Uh, guess what I said. <laughs> and by then, I knew how much material there was available, and I said, the first place, I thought there should be publications about. Brockport and the Morgan's place in Brockport history. And I thought there should be something to unite the community and get the people to know this beautiful house and the lawn. And that was the beginning of our 4th of July celebration. Thank you. <laughs> I did get started on the interviews. And am I glad that I did, because most of those that I interviewed within that year are no longer with us. And I learned so much. Along about that time, I was also helping with Sunday tours. So for 20 years, I was here every Sunday afternoon. And I guess that tells you I didn't have a great social life. <laughs> so, you know, that's the greatest thing. All the people that have become friends here that I would never have known. I should say right now, for anything that I have done for the Historical Society, oh, what they've done for me. Aww.